Soul dreams are not what they seem. My name is Melissa. I'm from Hissit Ministries, and today I'm going to talk about soul dreams, where they actually come from, and uh, yeah, what they actually mean, which is interesting. Um, it is not what you thought it was. By the end of this video, you're going to have a very different opinion about soul dreams. What are soul dreams? Soul dreams are dreams coming from your soul. They are also known as the dissociated parts of your humanity or parts of your personality in dreams. In the Strong's, that actual word of um, soul means nefesh in Hebrew, which is a soul, a living being, a life, a self, person, desire, passion, appetite, and emotion. There's actually a process that has to happen in order for a soulish dream to exist, so to speak. And basically what happens is a uh, part of you in real world, so this is the real world, goes through a sin, some sin happens to you, and in turn a part of you, um, a part of your soul is rejected. So part of that part of your humanity is rejected and um, it breaks off your soul, okay? And that becomes a soul part. And that part, um, in turn, needs somewhere to live. It needs somewhere to go um, and continue on its existence because it can't be part of your um, soul that's in the active wor world anymore. So it, it creates what um, we call inner worlds. It creates this environment that looks just like the world it lived in to house itself. And this um, inner world, in psychology, they would say it's in your mind. Isn't that interesting? Um, but yeah, and this inner world will look just like where it came from. It will um, usually, uh, the soul parts, these soul parts that get disconnected like that usually happen in childhood. So they'll be like a little kid stuck in time in that world. So they might be stuck in your parents' house where you grew up or some location like that where this traumatic event happened where you rejected yourself. Basically, these soul parts try to communicate with you through dreams and visions. And so what does this mean or what does this look like? Basically, um, you've got to think of yourself as okay, you were the original soul that, you know, rejected this little part of you and they fragment it off. And so what happens is that they want to talk to you and tell you what's going on in their inner world, especially if something bad's happening. Okay, something might be bad happening to them and they want to tell you what's going on. So what they do is um, is they give you a dream. They give you a vision. They say, hey, look at this bad thing. Look what's going on here. This is bad. This is dangerous. And this is where basically warning dreams come from. You ever had been someone who's been warned in a dream that something bad's going to happen? That's your soul parts talking to you. Okay, That's your soul parts dissociated telling you, warning you that something bad's going to happen. Pretty cool when they do that. Um, yeah, so soul parts, what they do is um, you, the core of the soul, is the presenter or the core. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't have DID, you'll be both. Um, if you're somebody who does have DID, you could be just the presenter, okay? And that little dissociated part could be your core, but it usually isn't. It's usually just um, a soul part, which would be probably, you know, just a part of you from childhood that broke off more commonly um, for people that just have dissociation. You've got to have more extreme versions for it to be um, a core part. And if they're really young under the age of 12, which usually they are, the sin came in through generational iniquity. So it came in for an agreement on your bloodline that was never repented of, which caused this sin to occur. So um, yeah, that's where this this soul part was basically created. This is, you might hear this term when you listen to people talk about inner healing, they'll talk about the creation of the soul part. And even if you talk to the soul part, they might actually tell you that they were created um, during this event and they're this old because that's when they were, when they were rejected, when they were dissociated, when they, you know, had that stuff happen. Okay, so soul, soul dreams are about your soul parts. And they're your soul parts um, living in the inner worlds, communicating with you, the core, the presenter, who is the person who goes to sleep, dreams about their soul part, wakes up in the morning and remembers the dream for a little bit, and then they forget it. In my experiences, soul parts always create the inner world, at least the base of the inner world, because they need somewhere to live. But the demons and the evil spirits connected to the sin that caused them to get stuck there will alter that world. They will change it into whatever they want. They will add things, they will put things there that are horrible. Um, sometimes they'll, and how they do that is they convince the soul part 
to create these things, you know, to create this bad thing because, you know, that's like what happened to you. So let's create that so you can go through that over and over again. And sometimes it will, in the in the soul part's mind, it will think, oh, you know, maybe if I create that, I can, um, you know, what's the word, fix that situation, <laughs> fix the situation that happened to me that was really bad. Maybe I can resolve that issue and all this stuff. Um, but unfortunately, it just becomes horrible nightmares. It doesn't actually fix the issue because it's kind of like, you got to think of it as these soul parts of children. Little kids don't know how to handle some of this stuff. So oh, most kids do not ha know how to handle this stuff. So yeah, it's, it's very hard for them. Why do we create an inner world? It's actually got to do with, um, uh, it's, it's, it's got a lot to do with this rejection issue. Like I was saying to you before, how, because we reject that part of ourselves and you're probably wondering why, why on earth would we reject ourselves? Um, and that has actually got to do with sin. Um, so the enemy's goal is to basically get us dissociated by causing, um, a part of us to uh, take on this sin nature, whatever evil, horrible thing it is, to the point where it has to be rejected from the core of us, the main part of us, um, in order to uh, live in an inner world or be in this other environment to interact with these evil demons and all this other stuff. Because we weren't created to be like that. We weren't created to have covenants with demons. We weren't created to be involved in these sinful practices. So it seems to be as soon as you make these agreements, um, part of your humanity basically has to break off from you and um, do its thing, its evil thing, separate from the core of you. But that seems to be what always goes on. They always seem to always be disconnected. There's always some sort of rejection and you need to fix that relationship. It's all about fixing the relationship again um, and breaking that sin agreement. As I said before, these inner worlds can look like a real place where the whatever traumatic event happened to them whatever sin horrible thing that happened to them um it can look just like that identical um but it can be altered by demons it also can uh, at the same time uh, represent a spiritual like almost like a fantasy state of the real so in other words um i remember in my early days when i got born again and i started having weird dreams of my house I was dreaming of a house in ruins, right? And had open doors everywhere and all this horrible stuff going on. And I was just like, why am I living in this absolutely rundown house? And, I had, and it was God showing me this house was a representation of me and all the sin doors I had opened that I hadn't repented for and how my home was literally in ruins because I had let the enemy come in and take everything and wreck everything and over my whole entire life of not repenting and changing my ways. And so this is an example of how in the real world, I don't live in a ruined house. I have doors and I have windows and I have all that stuff. But in, in when it comes to dreams and soul dreams, your souls will show you um, your spiritual atmosphere um, of the physical realm it lived in. So it was traumatized, obviously, somewhere in childhood or a young age in this house. And now I was seeing it um, through the eyes of that kid in ruins because of whatever sin came in. The enemy came in and stole everything. And now the house was a mess. Um, and um, basically God is taking me on a mission now to get it all back and to re-basically renovate their home, <laughs> which is me, my actual physical state to what he created and intended me to be, which I've spent the last, you know, six something years working on that, praise God. Um, uh, some other little things that God tends to do in with uh, like the house analogy, God's actually showing you where the doors are, where the sin is. I know for me, um, God showed me quite literally what this stuff was through repentance. I did a lot of repentance. I really didn't work. And I said, okay, God, what is that? And he would show me again some other sign and I'll go, wow, okay, I repent for that and I'll close the door. And I went, yes, got it. So I was all on my journey to fix my ruined house when I first got born again as an adult, um, which was interesting. Are soul parts evil? We have this misconception to think they're evil because they are the ones with the evil agreement to this demon and whatever spirit, spiritual problems going on. And sometimes these soul parts can literally be at war with you um, because you're so dissociated from them, they literally see you as a separate entity and they don't see you as the same, as, as like you are the same human being. 
they reject that idea and therefore they want to take you out. You, they see you as the enemy and they want to knock you out. And this is where a lot of suicidal stuff comes in with DID and SRA and stuff. These soul parts are not evil. They're they're parts of your humanity. They were originally created by God perfect. You have to remember that they were created by God perfect, but because of sin, they have been rejected and um, came into agreement whatever with it, whatever evil spirits, whatever fallen entity, whatever nonsense going on there. And therefore, they need to be rescued, basically. They need to repent. They need to close those doors. They need to be rescued. They need to get out of that place. Um, and this inner world that they're living in, they, they need to um, integrate with your core again so that you no longer are, you know, separated, basically. And then all that stuff's going to shut down. All, all your dreams are going to shut down. You know, a, a good example of somebody that has something like that would be uh, massive in men. Okay, so a lot of men growing up today were taught as little children that they shouldn't have emotions. So what happens is these little boys reject a part of their emotions in childhood. They lock that part of themselves away. Okay, and so they grow up. They don't cry. Something bad happens. Still not crying. They never feel anything because that little kid part is feeling it for them, you know, in that little inner world that they were rejected and locked into, but they don't feel it. And then they're an adult, and if you talk to them about emotions, they'll be like, what emotions? I don't have any emotions. I don't feel anything. Kids do that, you know, that's a girl's job. That is somebody who has dissociated themselves from their emotions, but more so than just dissociated themselves from their emotions, they agree that that was the right thing to do when it wasn't. They have literally rejected a part of their humanity, part of themselves that God created and intended them to have permanently, to be part of them, to be part of the system, to be part of their wholeness. And this is where um, it could be that simple. It doesn't have to be something dramatic. And you know, think about it. How many men do you know in the world that have that? That's common as. It actually was known as being socially acceptable. And the reality is it's the enemy. The enemy is hurting the boys. The hurt is hurting the little boys when they're children. People that um, don't remember their dreams um, are not necessarily people that don't have soul parts. <laughs> I know people would wish that was true. No. Um, what's usually true in that circumstance isn't that they don't have soul parts. It's usually because they are so dissociated they can't see their soul parts. They're so disconnected, their soul parts are not communicating with them. They hate each other. They don't want to talk to each other. Um, so, yeah, that's it's more of a, I would suggest, a heart issue. Um, people need to get their heart healed in that kind of situation. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen before their soul parts are going to communicate with each other yet. Are soul dreams also memories? Uh, this question is something we don't really know the answer to, um, but at the same time, there seems to be some connection. Um, I would actually suggest, like, I have had things like visions that very much look like memories, and later God's actually shown me it was a memory. So it's one of those things where I thought it was a vision, but it was really a memory. It's just that I didn't remember the memory because it was connected to a soul part that I was disconnected from. So this is where, yeah, I would suggest the visions, dreams, all of this is connected to memories, connected to inner worlds. So sometimes a memory will be like fantasy and that's more of an inner world when it could be more realistic um, because it's actually a memory of this event. And sometimes these child parts will create an inner world that looks exactly like the real event. And that's pretty crazy. You'll go in it and go, I remember this. I remember when this happened. La, 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 la. It'll be like, oh, all this stuff will come back to you. Um, and, you know, you could have been someone who's dissociated from that soul part your whole life for whatever reason. So, yeah, these soul dreams can be very much like a memory. This is an, another obvious one um, that's kind of unfortunate that no one wants to hear. But, unfortunately, everybody dreams and everybody's having soul dreams. So does that mean that everybody's got soul parts? And the answer is yes, <laughs> yes. Everybody has generational iniquity on their line. Everybody has um, sin because of that. Everybody's been dissociated in childhood. Yes, that's what I just said, childhood. Um, and a majority of these soul parts are very young, very, very young. 
and therefore your soul dreams are coming from these child parts. Um, now, what about dreams where you're an adult, where you're older? Okay, that can come from sin. It can also come from a protector part who is protecting a young soul part from a generational curse. It also can be uh, the same door of sin from childhood that is um, opened on multiple stages of your life. And so you're seeing multiple parts that are in agreement with it. Um, so it could be several things. It doesn't have to always be one or the other. But there's some of the things I've seen it been before. So people with more dreams than other people, is that someone with more dissociation? Um, I would suggest in that case, uh, no. Uh, um, from what I've experienced, at least in my testimony, um, I've always been a big dreamer. I've been a massive dreamer since I was a little child. Uh, my ability to see my dreams and remember them comes massively from reading the Bible. So the more I read the Bible, the more I can literally see in the darkness. If you want to remember your dreams, read the Bible. I'm just going to tell you right now, it works. It works every time. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would suggest because when God actually puts his Holy Spirit in that location and um, shows um, what's going on basically in your inner worlds and what's going on inside of you spiritually um, through his, his word, I don't think that seeing your dreams is an evil thing. I would suggest it's coming from God. Um, I would suggest it actually comes from some sort of wholeness. Um, what do I mean by that? As in, for example, it seems to be the more you're dissociated, the less you're aware of what's going on. And when you're not as dissociated, you seem to be way more aware. Keep in mind though, um, if you're somebody with like DID, like, and you're switching into different, um, identities, different personalities and stuff like that, different um, alters, soul parts, whatever you want to call them. Um, I call them s s parts. When they switch into different parts, um, they will they will remember all their dreams because they will live in that dream world, okay? But if you switch to another soul part, they'll have no idea of the other person and their inner world and all the stuff they're going through. So um, yeah, until you meet a protector or somebody who's more in a higher position, um, like a core part, then they'll be more aware of what's going on in the system as a global scale. Um, but, you know, again, that will depend on the relationship between the soul parts, whether they get along or whether they hate each other. If they hate each other, they're not going to know about each other. So, um, yeah, so really remembering your dreams comes massively in my experiences from more wholeness then brokenness, it's the other way around, if you're going to use the word wholeness and brokenness in terms of sin and dissociation. Can we stop soul dreams? Um, and the answer is yes, you can get your soul parts set free. <laughs> That's what you can do. So you have to remember the whole, the whole process of this was sin and rejecting of yourself. You rejected yourself. So the solution is, guess what, repentance and accepting yourself. Interesting. Um, so yeah, this is where uh, a lot of therapists go into this. Um, they go into a lot of, you know, self-acceptance and, um, and they've got different names for it. Um, the Bible would call it unconditional love. You need to have unconditional love for yourself. Okay. No conditions. Love yourself the way God loves you. And it's, and it's not in an ungodly way. It's in a way where you are loving yourself for being God's creation, for being his child, for being, um, you know, all the wonderful things in the Bible he says you are, okay? All those beautiful things. <laughs> that, that is why you love yourself. You love yourself because God loves you. How do you shut down the realm, shut down this inner world, this place it's created, do you even need to shut it down? That's the next question. You'll notice that when you get to a stage with a soul part where they um, feel loved again, where they feel accepted again, where they've repented and they don't have this guilt anymore, they don't have this shame, they don't have whatever pain it is that is gone, um, they can sometimes just reintegrate themselves. So they don't need anything. They just, they'll do it themselves. And all of a sudden that inner world will disappear and um, the person will not dream about it anymore. It'll all stop. Okay, so in other words, what am I saying? These soul dreams can stop. A lot of people don't realize that. You, you don't have to keep having them for the rest of your life. Don't need to dream about your grandmother's house forever. You can actually 
shut that down. You can close those doors. You can close those sins. You can get those soul parts, the resolve they need, the healing they need to get out of there. You don't, it doesn't have to go on forever. Okay. Handy hint. You actually can make that stop, um, which is amazing. It's really cool. You, you, the thing is that you, if they don't always integrate, sometimes they'll do it on their own. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll need a helping hand. You need to ask them if they want to integrate. You can ask them why they don't want to integrate. What do they need to feel like they can? Um, you know, you, you might have to, again, DID. If you're going to go into DID stuff, you're going to have to get the soul parts to communicate with each other. You're going to have to get them to become friends. You've got to figure out why such and such is upset with such and such. You need to get them all to come together. Think of them as separate people because they see themselves as separate and you need to get them all to come and hang out and, you know, hold hands again and love each other, you know, like they should. And that takes time, okay? It's not going to happen right away. Um, sometimes you're going to need a lot of work on that. Um, so, you know, do what you can when as you go. Just work on it. Just work on fixing that relationship. Work on um, bringing that wholeness to that little soul part. And then eventually that little soul part will feel totally happy to reintegrate. And if you say, hey, you want to integrate? And then ask Jesus to integrate you back together. And voila, done deal. And then you say, God, if you don't want the inner world to exist anymore, shut it down in the name of Yeshua. And he will, it will be gone. You know, you could pray that, but sometimes you don't have to. It really depends on um, kind of, you know, whether or not it's all kind of, you know, What's the word? The soul part won't need it anymore, so they'll just dissolve it. You know, they'll just they'll shut it down themselves. They're like that. How many inner worlds can you have? And the answer is, you'll have an inner world usually for every single soul part. So it really depends on how much dissociation you have, how much sin you have. The more sin in your life, the more in the worlds you're probably going to have. Um, keeping in mind that um, these soul parts can sometimes all live in the same inner world. So, um, and that's got to do with like, maybe you've come into that sin agreement multiple times. So they're all living in the same world. Um, you can even see them in dreams as uh, walking into each other and becoming one person. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, and all this other stuff going on. Sometimes um, you could see them as separate entities to use in a dream. So when you start having weird dreams like that, that's that's a that's a, a sin that you've done multiple times over your bloodline, and um, going into things like generational iniquity and stuff to do with how that operates. Um, yeah. The, the key with generational iniquity is the enemy tries to attack you in childhood and then later in adulthood to create um, that sin agreement. He needs to do it twice for the curse to continue on your bloodline. And it's got to do with the fact that he comes in through the iniquity in childhood through your parents that didn't repent on their, uh, on their behalf. And that doesn't mean that your parents have to do this. Um, it can come in through... Uh, somebody else who also has that same sin agreement who's your teacher or some sort of caretaker or somebody like that that attacks you with this same agreement in sin open door to sin on their line attacks you as a child and then later as an adult the enemy will come again and cause your soul part that part of you to re um come in agreement to the sin so that the curse will continue so this is where generational iniquity plays a huge role when it comes to soul parts, like young soul parts that is dissociated and which create these soul fragments, which in turn are our soul dreams. So yeah, this is really big. This is really huge. Generational iniquity is behind soul dreams. That's the most simple way of putting it. That is where they're coming from. They're coming from generational iniquity. Um, yeah, does that mean that um, soul dreams are not from God? Well, yeah, pretty much. No, they're not from God now. But keep in mind, that doesn't mean that God can't come into your inner world and communicate with your soul parts. He's God. He can do that. He can do anything. Um, and to be honest, I've seen him do that. So yes, yes, he can do that. And he sometimes will. Um, but at the same time, uh, that doesn't mean that the dream comes from God. Uh, there is people out there that believe they do come from God. Unfortunately, that is not true. The dreams um, are actually coming from your soul parts. They're coming from your soul, parts of your soul that is dissociated. 
and usually young parts of you. So don't go to them for revelation. Um, they're not going to have revelation. They're going to be more clueless probably than you are because this happened to them as little children. So they have no idea what's going on. They're just basically operating in a system that God created um, for our human bodies to survive traumatic events. Okay. It's actually God's coping mechanism for us to handle the horrible environment we live in in this world full of sin. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't repent and close those doors and get set free. Um, God wants that for you. He wants you to get set free. Thanks for joining us. Till next time, God bless.